60 Minutes Overtime. So Kevin um, wrote this, and he wrote it in um, 2006 when he was in his first Iraq deployment. Inspired by pain and anger, I continue to force my body to drive on. The madness inside me drowns the voices all around me. Gripped by war, I continue to live on. And you found that after you died. Sergeant Kevin Ash um, was from Minnesota. He ended up serving um, in Kosovo, and then he served two tours in Iraq. And during this time, he experienced um, roughly 12 exposures to blast, um, which impacted his brain. So this is... Um, I'm Ashley Bealey. I'm a producer with 60 Minutes, and Sharon Alfonsi and I just completed a story on CTE, a degenerative brain disease, that um, you get through some sort of impact to the brain. So if you're playing sport, um, that would likely be through concussion. If you're serving in combat, that would be through some sort of exposure to blast. And what it does is it, it, it's literally a blow to the brain. I will not run. Kevin's mother, Joy, did not get her hands on these journals or these pages um, until after his death. And it was only then that she started to fully see and understand the depth of his despair. He wrote this, why? Why am I full of this thing inside of me? What is it? This darkness, this hole that cannot take shape. He was searching, trying to figure out what was going on with him. Yes. It was only when he returned that he began to, to show a lot of these extreme symptoms, the depression, the suicidal thoughts, the anxiety. He continued to decline over a number of years and um, to the point where he um, lost his vision um, and he couldn't really walk anymore and he was basically ended up like a shadow of, of his former self. They started reaching out to different doctors and they basically were getting nowhere and were told oh, it's just because of what he was, saw in Iraq. It's just because of what he went through. His dying wish really was to get to the bottom of what was wrong with him. I asked him what he wanted to do, and he said, donate my brain. This is where we keep all the frozen tissue, and this is the world's largest CTE brain bag. This is the brain freezers. We keep the brains at minus 80. Sergeant Kevin Ash died just last January, so Ann McKee received his brain within hours of his death and was able to do that critical research. So this is Sergeant Ash's brain? Right. This is four sections of his brain, and what you can see is these lesions, and those lesions are CTE. That might explain some of his anxiety and irritability. Uh, How'd you feel after hearing that it was, in fact, CTE? Numb. For him, I wanted some validation that he wasn't going crazy. I think, you know. He wasn't going crazy. He was injured. He was injured. He was hurt. And that's the thing that really came to light in our, in our research, our story, and our reporting, is that there could be potentially hundreds of thousands of people walking around um, who are in the throes of developing this disease or already have the disease um, that just don't know. There are two critical ways that people out there, um, particularly in military families and military communities, can help in furthering this research. The first one is for families to um, take that step and with their loved one, with their soldier, um, and donate that brain. You should reach out to Dr. Ann McKee at the Boston VA, Boston University Brain Bank. We have like 425 brains in the brain bank. Two-thirds of them are football players, generally speaking. How hard is it to, to get one of those veterans' brains? Are they coming in at the same rate as the athletes? No. The military is what, where we're really lacking. And possibly even more importantly, those who feel like they may be suffering from CTE or have such extreme symptoms, they should reach out to um, certain hospitals, such as Mount Sinai in New York City, who are developing these trials and have active trials going now with a number of veterans. For many um, soldiers who are involving themselves in this research, and many of the families 
who are donating their brains to this research, they're viewing this as sort of a final act of service. 